Level 0. At level 0, we're dealing with snakes that have no venom at all. No fangs, no toxic glands, no chemical weapons. These are the old-school predators, the ones that rely entirely on muscle, stealth, and timing to survive. Snakes like the boa constrictor, python, and corn snake fall into this group. They kill by constriction, wrapping their bodies around prey and squeezing with enough pressure to stop blood flow and breathing. It's a method that may be silent, but it's far from gentle. And while level 0 snakes are technically non-venomous, that doesn't mean they're harmless. In 2017, a man in Indonesia disappeared while working in his garden. Days later, he was found inside the body of a 23-foot reticulated python. The snake had crushed him, swallowed him whole, and then waited to digest. No venom, just power and instinct. Of course, most non-venomous snakes pose no threat to humans. Many are docile, small, and even beneficial to ecosystems. But this level sets the foundation. Survival doesn't require venom, and for millions of years, constriction has been a perfectly lethal alternative. Still, when venom enters the equation, even just a little, everything changes. You no longer need strength or size to take down prey. You just need a drop of chemistry in the right place. And at level one, that drop starts working its way under the skin. Level one. At level one, venom enters the scene, but it's more annoying than alarming. These snakes have mild venom often delivered through rear-facing fangs that aren't built for serious damage. Their toxins can cause symptoms like redness, swelling, and itching, but for most healthy adults, it's nothing more than a painful inconvenience. Snakes in this category include the hognose snake, ring-necked snake, and the slender, elegant green vine snake. They don't chase people. They're not aggressive. In fact, the eastern hognose snake is famous for being dramatic in all the wrong ways. When threatened, it plays dead, flops onto its back and sticks out its tongue. If that doesn't work, it might bluff a strike. But if it does bite, the venom is too weak to do any real harm. Still, level one venom can surprise you. Some people experience allergic reactions and in rare cases, even mild envenomation can lead to nausea, dizziness, or infection if untreated. One hiker in Costa Rica reported a bite from a green vine snake that caused two days of swelling and burning. Not life-threatening, but definitely vacation ruining. What makes this level deceptive is the illusion of safety. These snakes are often colorful, small, or slow-moving, and that can give people the wrong impression. But even a harmless snake with venom is still part of nature's chemical arms race. Compared to level zero where snakes rely on brute strength, level one introduces the idea of chemical attack. The effects may be mild, but they prove one thing. You don't need to be big to be dangerous. You just need the right formula. And at level two, that formula gets a whole lot nastier. Level 2. At level 2, venom becomes more than just a sting. It starts to break your body from the inside out. These snakes produce moderate strength venom, often filled with hemotoxins. That means their venom targets your blood and vascular system, interfering with clotting, damaging tissue, and in severe cases, causing internal bleeding and organ failure. Snakes at this level include some of the most deceptively deadly, like the saw-scaled viper. It's small, quiet, and blends into its surroundings. But when it strikes, it delivers a venom that causes uncontrollable bleeding, both internally and externally. Victims have been known to bleed from their gums, nose, and even through their skin. One case from rural India tells the story clearly. A farmer was walking barefoot through tall grass when he was bitten by what looked like a small, harmless snake. Within hours, his foot had ballooned with swelling. By nightfall, his blood pressure had dropped dangerously low, and he began vomiting blood. Doctors later confirmed it was a saw-scaled viper, and said if he had arrived just 30 minutes later, he wouldn't have survived. These snakes often live in areas with limited access to healthcare, which makes them far more dangerous than their size suggests. Without rapid treatment, their bites can lead to amputation, permanent disability, or death. Compared to level 1, where symptoms are mostly surface level, level 2 venom works deep in the body. It doesn't just hurt, it destroys. The damage can spread for hours after the bite, dissolving muscle, rupturing blood vessels, and flooding organs with toxins. This is where snake bite stops being a story about fangs and becomes a fight for survival. And at level 3, that fight gets even harder, because that's when your nervous system starts shutting down, one breath at a time. Level 3. At level 3, Venom crosses a terrifying threshold. It no longer just damages tissue or disrupts blood. It starts to shut down your body's command center, the nervous system. This is the realm of neurotoxic venom. These toxins block the signals that travel from your brain to your muscles. 
That means every essential movement, from blinking to speaking to breathing, begins to fail. The victim may feel fine at first, but within minutes paralysis sets in, starting at the extremities and working its way inward. One of the most notorious snakes in this category is the black mamba, found across sub-Saharan Africa. Despite its sleek, dark appearance and myth-like reputation, the real danger lies in its speed and efficiency. A black mamba can deliver multiple bites in seconds, injecting enough neurotoxin to kill a human in under an hour, sometimes much less. In one reported case, a wildlife guide in South Africa was bitten while walking a trail. He began to feel dizzy within 10 minutes. His speech slurred. His legs went weak. By the time he arrived at the hospital, his lungs were barely functioning. It took a ventilator, anti-venom, and luck to keep him alive. What makes Level 3 so dangerous is how silent and fast the effects can be. The bite site may not even hurt much, which fools people into thinking it's no big deal. But while you're walking it off, your diaphragm is losing control. Without treatment, death often comes by respiratory failure. Not because your heart stops, but because your lungs simply forget how to breathe. Compared to level 2 where venom rips through tissue and blood vessels, level 3 venom attacks communication, cutting off the body from the brain. The result? Total shutdown. This is the level where you can't afford to hesitate. A delay in treatment doesn't just increase pain, it decreases your chance of survival by the minute. And yet, there's more. Because level 4 venom doesn't just paralyze or destroy, by it overwhelms. One bite and it can end multiple lives. Level 4? At level 4, venom becomes not just lethal, it becomes mathematically catastrophic. We're talking about snakes whose venom is so toxic, so concentrated, that one bite can carry enough venom to kill dozens of humans. These are the species with the lowest LD50 values ever recorded, meaning it takes an incredibly small dose to be fatal. Venom at this level doesn't just do one thing. It does everything. It paralyzes nerves, destroys blood cells, melts tissue, collapses organs, and floods the bloodstream with toxins. It's like being hit by five different biological weapons at once, and you may not even see it coming. The most infamous representative of this tier is the inland taipan, also known as the fierce snake. Native to Australia's arid interior, the inland taipan holds the title for the most venomous snake on earth. Its bite contains enough venom to kill over 100 adult humans, or nearly 250,000 mice. That's not a myth, that's what the data says. In controlled lab environments, scientists have seen the effects of taipan venom unfold with terrifying speed. Within minutes, the venom attacks muscle tissue and the central nervous system, causing paralysis, internal bleeding, and eventual respiratory failure. The speed of onset and the wide range of biological targets make it one of the most complete killing mechanisms in nature. Fortunately, the inland taipan is extremely reclusive and rarely comes into contact with humans. But others in this tier, like the coastal taipan or eastern brown snake, are more aggressive, more widespread, and still carry venom powerful enough to kill in under an hour if left untreated. What separates level 4 from level 3 isn't just toxicity, that he hits scale. These snakes don't just carry lethal venom, they carry enough of it to take out multiple people with horrifying speed. They don't rely on a perfect strike, even a glancing bite can be fatal if the venom hits the bloodstream. At this level, a single bite becomes a mass casualty threat. And yet, we still haven't hit the most unpredictable level because at level 5, venom starts changing from snake to snake, region to region. The rules break down and survival becomes a game of chance. Level 5? At level 5, venom stops following a script. It becomes unpredictable, unstable, and in some cases, impossible to measure accurately. This level isn't defined by a single snake or a consistent chemical profile. It's defined by variation sometimes within the same species or even the same snake across different regions. The venom in this tier can shift in composition, strength, and behavior, depending on factors like geography, age, diet, and even season. Two snakes from the same species may produce venoms with completely different effects, and that's what makes level 5 so dangerous. Take the king cobra, for example. It's the world's longest venomous snake and one of the most feared, but not all king cobra bites are the same. In India, its venom tends to be more neurotoxic, causing muscle paralysis and respiratory failure. In Southeast Asia, it may lean more towards cytotoxic or cardiotoxic effects, attacking tissues and disrupting heart function. Same species, different outcomes. Now imagine you're in a remote part of the world, far from a hospital. 
You get bitten by a king cobra, but the anti-venom available was manufactured for a different population of the same species. In some cases it may work, partially. In others it might not work at all. This isn't limited to king cobras. Venom variation has been documented in rattlesnakes, crates, pit vipers, and more. Some populations evolve more toxic venom based on the resistance of their prey. Others lose toxicity in certain regions altogether. For researchers and doctors, this turns diagnosis and treatment into a guessing game. Even more unsettling are the unclassified species that have been reported in remote regions, deep jungles, isolated islands, or understudied deserts. Locals sometimes report bites from snakes that don't match any known profile, snakes with no confirmed species name, and venom that causes rapid collapse, seizures, or death before any intervention is possible. And then there's the rumored hybrids, snakes that may have interbred across venomous lines, producing unique and unpredictable toxin profiles. These cases are rare and not well documented, but when anti-venom fails and symptoms don't match the literature, scientists are left with more questions than answers. Level 5 isn't just about potency, it's about uncertainty. Medical response becomes harder. Treatment windows shrink. Survival depends not just on the bite, but on where you are, who made the anti-venom, and what that particular snake evolved to kill. And the scariest part? Venom is still evolving. Which leads us to level 6, the final tier, where venom doesn't just break the rules, it rewrites them completely. Level 6. Level 6 is where science meets speculation, the theoretical top of the venom scale. These are not your average snake bites. In fact, they may not have happened yet, or if they have, we may not have recognized them for what they truly were. This level represents venom that is so potent, unusual, or unexplored, it can't be reliably measured by traditional tools like LD50 tests. It's venom that acts in ways we don't fully understand. It might come from an undiscovered species, a rare mutation, or even lab-altered biology. But the effect is the same. Devastation that outpaces medicine. Let's start with the natural world. In remote areas like the Congo Basin, Papua New Guinea, and deep sections of the Amazon rainforest, there have been reports, unconfirmed but chilling, of snake bites where victims collapsed within minutes with no obvious wound or swelling. In some cases, people died so quickly there wasn't even time to identify the snake. No known species matched the symptoms. And no known anti-venom worked. Scientists believe that high variation venom profiles, combined with rare or undocumented species, may be responsible. In theory, a single evolutionary leap, a faster acting neurotoxin, a new enzyme, or a hyper-concentrated delivery system could change the entire threat landscape overnight. But level 6 isn't just about nature, it's about what humans might create. Advances in synthetic biology and genetic engineering have opened the door to lab-designed venom, created for research or in darker corners for bioweapons. These synthetic venoms could be tailored to bypass immunity, resist treatment, or even target specific organs or systems with brutal efficiency. Now imagine a bite that causes instant collapse. No swelling, no time, just unconsciousness, organ shutdown, and death within minutes. Before a victim can call for help, a venom so refined that no known anti-venom binds to it, and nothing in the database matches its behavior. We're not saying that kind of venom exists today. We're saying it could, and that's enough to take level 6 seriously. This tier isn't about what we know. It's about what we can't see yet. It's about the snakes we haven't found, the molecules we haven't sequenced, the moments where everything we've learned about envenomation fails in real time. Because venom doesn't stop evolving. It doesn't care about our scales, our systems, or our confidence. It only cares about one thing, efficiency. And when the next evolutionary leap happens, or the next lab experiment crosses a line, level six might not just be a theory anymore. It could be the new reality.